Welcome to lesson two on how to create a Raspberry Pi robot step by step. In the last lesson, we started with the fundamentals on how to blink an LED coded in Python. In this lesson, you will learn to create a program that accepts user input from a keyboard. And you will learn how to use pulse width modulation. A function that can be used to accept user input is the input function. When you run your program, it will prompt the user to enter a key from the keyboard. And then you must press enter after you submit your input. But what if we wanted to enter a character without the carriage return? This is how we want to design our first user interface to our remote controlled robot using the AWSD keys to move around. In order to accomplish this, we will use the get function. First, we must install that library. All right, the first step is to install the get package here by doing sudo pip install py.get. Okay, if you don't already have the package, it will download and install. If you recall from the previous lesson, I used GPIO 21 to connect this 330 ohm resistor to the LED to ground. Let's take a look at the code. I created a file called userinput.py. We're going to modify the code from last lesson. In this lesson here, we're going to hit one key, let's say A, to turn on the LED and we'll hit another key, say S, to turn it off. How will we accomplish that? Well, first, let's take a look at the libraries that we're importing. rpy.gpio times sys, and here's the new one, getch. Set mode, gpio.bcm, and the LED is connected to gpio pin 21. The pin is an output, and we have these two functions defined here where the GPIO is high to turn on the LED and low to turn it off. I'm going to add some text here to prompt the user to enter in a key. So we'll use print A will be the key, will be equal to on, and S is equal to off. Okay. In this while true infinite loop, we're going to accept the character in character getch and that's how you call the getch function so whatever key that you press will be in car now we have to look at what's inside and make a decision here so if car is equal to the character a that we hit okay then we'll print LED is on and we need to turn on that LED by calling the function here. Okay, elif, also known as else if and C, elif car is equal to S, then we print LED is off. Then we need to turn off the LED by calling that function. Else, if we hit any other key, it'll just come out of the program or quit the program, break out of the loop. And to do that, let's have a first prompt. We'll say quit and break. This will break out of the while true loop using the break command there. And what I want to use is GPIO cleanup. What this does is it turns off the pins, so it makes a clean exit. Let's run this and see what happens. Now to run it, we use sudo python user input.py. All right, now take a look at the window to your right. If I hit A, the LED is on. If I hit S, the LED is off. Right? I can toggle it back and forth by doing this. And if I hit any other key, it quits. Cool. Now let's talk about pulse width modulation to 
fade in and out this LED. Pulse width modulation refers to sending time bursts of power to the load. We'll be manipulating the pulse width of a digital waveform. We will use 50 Hz frequency pins on the Raspberry Pi GPIO. The period of the waveform is equal to 1 over the frequency. In this case, 1 over 50 Hz is equal to 20 milliseconds. That is the length of the period of the waveform. To determine the length of time a pulse is high in the period of this pulse waveform, we calculate what is known as the duty cycle. And that is equal to the pulse width tau over the period, and we'll express this as a percentage. When we're delivering full power to the load, we have a constant DC voltage of 3.3 volts as shown in this diagram here. So if we have voltage and time, and this is in milliseconds, we have here a 100% duty cycle of 3.3 volts. But if we wanted to vary the average voltage to the circuit, we'll change the width of the pulse. For example, if the signal was high, for 5 milliseconds. This is the voltage, this is the time in milliseconds, and here tau, the pulse width, is 5 milliseconds and the total pulse period is 20 milliseconds. In this case the duty cycle is equal to 5 milliseconds over 20 milliseconds times 100 is equal to 25% duty cycle, which means that the pulse is high 25% of the time. If we wanted to increase the pulse width to, say, 10 milliseconds, the duty cycle, shown as here. Okay, in this case, right here is 10 milliseconds. So the duty cycle, 10 milliseconds over 20 milliseconds times 100 is 50% duty cycle. The pulse is high for half the time of this period. Also, what if we wanted to have a 75% duty cycle? And that would be 15 milliseconds. So the duty cycle will be calculated as 15 milliseconds over 20 milliseconds times 100, which is 75%. By varying the pulse width, we could control the average voltage and current to the load. This is used to create the fade in and fade out effect in the LED and control the speed of the motor. Let's take a look at the code. I created a file called ledfade.py. As you can see, I have my libraries imported, set mode BCM. We're gonna use LED21 as usual here, and we're gonna do the GPO is output. Now keep note that I'm using software pulse width modulation. I can use any of the GPIO pins that is usable for our project here. And there is hardware pulse width modulation that you can do as well. Well, let's continue here. This works pretty well when trying to fade in and out an LED. Now, what we're gonna do is we're going to set our pin 21 to frequency of 50 Hertz, as we were explaining. To do that, I'm gonna call it LED fade GPIO pulse width modulation 21 pin 21 at frequency 50 and we're going to start our LED fade at 0 okay so it's just going to be off at first when we create our continuous loop here we're going to use a for statement in Python 
Here, we will increment the value to increase the brightness, and then we're going to decrement the value to decrease the brightness. So we'll continue the code by LED fade change duty cycle x. And we will have a time interval of 100 milliseconds as it increases. To decrease, we'll use a convenient statement, reversed range 101. This will start at 100 and decrease. Change duty cycle. And we'll keep the same time interval of 100 milliseconds. Okay? Let's run this and see how that works. Now, to execute the script, we'll go python led fade.py. Now, as you can see on the window to your right, the LED is fading in to its maximum brightness as that value in the for loop increases. Once it reaches the maximum, it will then start decreasing the value as it fades out. Your assignment is to combine the code that you learned today. How about once you enter in a key, then it activates the LED to fade in and out. What about changing the delays a bit to see if you can fade it in and out faster or slower? In this lesson, you learned how to accept a user input from a keyboard and pulse width modulation. We'll use PWM concepts on a future lesson to do speed control and to control a server motor. On the next lesson, lesson three, we're going to look at motor control. Don't forget to hit that notification button so you don't miss the next video. I can't wait to see you next time.